any challenges, especially design-wise, or uh, or working on such a dark palette to uh, shift gears into a into the dark Justice League world? Um, for me, it wasn't so much a challenge as just a tremendous opportunity and a tremendous amount of fun. I mean, when you get to in include, like, sort of introduce characters like Etrigan and Dead Man and Constantine, you know, they're, they're so well established in the comics. Um, but one of the really fun things is, like, when you're working, we've worked on, you know, I think three. Batman solo films and three Justice League movies that tie into this continuity and those characters are tremendous amount of fun and, and actually a huge challenge because they uh, the Justice League characters all are kind of like perfect and godlike and, and ca almost carved in marble and you, you know you have to stay pretty close to the established traditions with these characters that we're introducing in Justice League Dark, they're the freaks and the monsters, and the, they're more off the wall and bizarre, and there's, there's more room to play, there's more wiggle room, almost like as much like latitude as when we're I introducing villains, you know, but the, in this case, we turn it on its ear because the monsters are the heroes. Um, so yeah, they actually, uh, are, lend themselves to a wider variety of interpretations and it's really I guess the challenge then is in narrowing down uh, what we want them to look and feel like and how we play them against each other as far as their silhouette and their design. I might even begin to show a little maybe get a feel for Constantine and Etrigan. Josh, cue up that second clip, please. Jay, you constantly take the fight scenes to another level. What tricks did you pull out of your sleeve on this one to amp the action? Um, what did I do? Well, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, so a lot of the magic. So a lot of the magic, I just watched like all my old video games and just kind of pulled what I wanted to. Um, I love Full Metal Alchemist and. So so basically what I did is I take all the things that I love and I kind of throw it into the DC universe and kind of come up with something a little bit new. We, we try to do, if you notice with the, the, the magic, like the demons have their own, the runes look a different way. Uh, Constantine's, his magic looks very different. It has a different color. Like his is green, like Zatanna's I think is like white or blue. Um, I kind of came up with a theory of the different magic and basically I asked myself if I was ever going to do a Harry Potter movie, well, how would I would do it? And that's kind of what I did with this film. And it's like the transmutation symbols from Full Metal. Oh yeah, it's basically yeah. that. I mean, I, I just ripped it off. <laughs> Matt, I know you know this character inside and out. Any, uh, does it require any extra nuances just to deliver him by voice? Um, I think, well, the most interesting thing about doing him in this context is, uh, is the exploring the different relationships with these characters, like exploring the relationship with Batman and Zatanna and Deadman and all, and Swamp Thing, all of whom Constantine has very precarious relationships with, and Getting to kind of play that out was was a really really fun thing to do, and but also play it out, you know, um, to the air, to no one in a booth when there's no one there, you know. As I've been used to kind of putting the trench coat on and and, and doing it for real in situations, so um, it, it was a it was a very different kind of way of working, and but also. Uh, uh, it, it was it was so freeing in a way, and these guys were were so great to work with in the booth, and we had so much fun, kind of like exploring these different parts of Constantine, and, uh, and we really had a good time. Jason, Matt owns Constantine live action and animated. Are you ready to put on the cowl? Yeah. I already did to do. That's what I call Friday night. <laughs> Dress up, you don't, you don't have to go anywhere, you can just kind of, uh, just perch yourself on top of your roof and um, make sure the neighbors get home okay. Stuff like that. I love, by the way, I love that, um, that Batman got a bit of a whoop for his animosels. <laughs> like, ooh. 
Was that was that you, Phil? Did you have to design his animals? Uh, I can't remember exactly how it came. I think you did, Phil. <laughs> Actually, what you guys didn't see is that prior to that, we cut it out. There was a shower sequence where he was showering, but we ended up cutting it. That was motion capture. That was motion capture. Full frontal. <laughs> This is your seventh time voicing Batman for us, which is, we feel like we just got you. Uh, how do you, um, with so many other voices of Batman prior to you, not just voices but acting, how did you find a way to differentiate and make it your own? And is, and is it easier now than it was before? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it ever gets easier. Um, I certainly never, ever take it for granted. I try to approach each, each film project um, uh, on its own merits and uh, almost like try to start again because I want to make sure that the voice keeps evolving and, and changing. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, over, over a period of time it should evolve and change just as the actor's voice kind of continues to mature in different ways. Um, so I think there's definitely been a, a progression from you know, Justice League War to, to Justice League Dark. And I think you could probably, if you bothered to sit down and watch all seven of them in one sitting, which, um, and that's, that's a weekend right there, um, you know, you'd probably, probably be able to hear that, that evolution. Um, and it's also been a real privilege to witness uh, Stuart Allen's uh, evolution as the voice of Damien. Um, he's been terrific you know, throughout the series. Obviously, he doesn't, he doesn't figure in this movie, but um, I think, that relationship between Batman and Damien is what sets this um, animated series, certainly from Batman's point of view, apart from, from the others. This isn't a Batman who, who works alone. This, this is a Batman who has this sort of uh, complicated backstory and uh, family baggage that perhaps the other Batman don't quite have. Matt, we were joking about you doing a spell, but I mean, you had to do them during the series and you do them in this film. Is there someone that teaches you this? Did you study Latin at length? What, how, do you, uh, how did that work on the series and then in this, in this film? Well, the reason I, I didn't do it is because I, I can't remember any of them. I, I don't know any of them off by heart. Um, no, they were always very, very kind of difficult to do. We had quite a lot of fun, didn't we, when we were recording it because I just kept on getting them wrong. <laughs> and sometimes that sounded really good, but uh, no, when we actually did the TV show, we ha actually had an exorcist who would do the spells and things for us and um, try to make them as real as possible and I would have language coaches and dialect coaches to kind of get me through them and uh, what was interesting with this, I, after doing the show and then coming to do the animation, I, I, was, I was pretty okay at it, you know, I, I, I could, I, I'd done it a few times, put it that way. But they were always very difficult to get your, your mouth around as well, you know, it's, I think there's so many different languages and different spells that you speak that, uh, that, it, that it can be a difficult thing, yeah. You too. <laughs> you two didn't meet until today, and yet you have the great comedy, uh, uh, like a comedy buddy comedy going in this with great uh, it's the odd couple. chemistry. It the is. Couple. How, how did that work out for you guys? I mean, you've both seen the movie, I mean, and, but you didn't act together. How, yeah, it's how does that work for you and what did you think? Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing because literally I just met Jason this morning. And, uh, and then after watching the movie, I was like, hey, we work pretty good together on the screen, you know? But it's the first time actually meeting him in, in, in real life. And I'm Welsh and he's Irish. And uh, I see a buddy cop movie in the making. <laughs> uh, why don't we show you what that looks like when they're acting together along with... Uh, So, Josh, please show the people. Beyond these two great actors, we also have a heck of a, a heck of a cast. That's Camilla Luddington as uh, as Zatanna, uh, Nick Totoro as Dead Man. Uh, we get Rico Colantoni later on as Felix Faust, and Jeremy Davies from uh, Justified as uh, Richie there. 
You got anybody, a favorite actor you guys uh, thought uh, killed it out there? Aside from Matt and Jason, of course. Jerry O'Connell comes back as Superman. Jerry O'Connell and most all of the uh, Rosario Dawson. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a They're all back in there. We, we have quite the uh, Justice League cast. Uh, I thought Camilla did a great job as Zatanna. Uh, you know, uh, Matt had a lot of really hard spells, but Camilla had to do all of her spells backwards. And, and it's not like we, she did it forwards and then we just reversed it. She actually, you know, pronounced it all out backwards. And uh, I you gotta give it to her, because I remember when we were recording it, and I'm like, how did she even do that? It's, it's quite amazing. And I thought she did a fantastic job, especially since Zatanna has appeared in, uh, previously on other animated stuff. So it's kind of nice to get a different take on her in our, in our kind of new universe. And she kind of brought something really nice to, to the performance. James, anybody that's um, you? Well, you mentioned Nick Totoro. He was uh, he's John Totoro's brother, and uh, he does a terrific John Totoro impersonation. By the way, um, and you know, he was an unusual choice. But I saw one of his I don't know if it was his radio show or podcast. It was on YouTube, and um, I was looking for something that sounded very Brooklyn, and. Uh, <laughs> Whatever that means now, I don't know what that means anymore. But uh, he just say he had a street uh, sensibility to his uh, his delivery that was really it really brought Boston Brand to life as Dead Man. Uh, okay. Anyway, he was great. Nick Taturo. Actually, there's, there's one bit in the film where it's one of my favorite bits where uh, Dead Man tries to possess Batman. <laughs> I don't want to give it away, but. It was great for me to record because I then had to do uh, Nick Turturro's voice as if it was in my head, but as Batman. Uh, so it was really weird. It was like, what's going on in here? Oh, gee, I can't hang on. This, this guy's head is just, it's crazy in here. I gotta get out. You answered that at an interview earlier, and I had no idea what you were doing. It scared me. That, it is scary. That's why I like it. And all these new characters that we got introduced in this film. It, do you have a favorite? Some of you, I mean, Phil, did you rather enjoy drawing anyone in particular? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, again, it's just the fun of being able to draw characters that are more pushed and. Uh, you know, you have a, a tremendous amount of room to play. I think Etrigan was a ton of fun to draw, you know. When I think of Etrigan, I think of the Kirby version, obviously, and then the Bruce Tim DC, DC animated version. And while this, you know, is sort of reminiscent of those, and it's recognizable, we still did our own thing. Um, also super cool to do Constantine, um, you know, we had, you know, Matt's depiction in the live action series was spot on. So I was looking at reference from that. I mean, to be honest, I always have pictures of Matt just laying around on my desk. <laughs> That's a whole other story. No, but, but it was cool to dig into the reference on all these characters. Um, and Swamp Thing is a ton of fun to draw because he's so, he's so cool and, and, and you can, there's so many different directions that, that you can make him work in. And it's almost an artist's playground because He's so organic, you know, and so he lends himself to a, like having a lot of fun with shapes and stuff. Right now. <laughs> if we show you Swamp Thing now, we won't be able to show you anything later. And when we do premieres, you'll be it'll just be spoiling it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Raise your hand. Should we show a Swamp Thing clip or not? You want it? All right, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna show the Swamp Thing clip and then we'll go to audience Q&A. So after the Swamp Thing clip, get out here, line up, and it's your turn to ask the questions. Josh, go ahead and roll that last clip.